G'day guys, how's it going? Welcome to Man Cave Tuesday. Hope you all had a ripple week. I guess you're wondering what the hell's going on. The TV over there, that's Shadower 75. You might have seen him doing the Simpson Desert with uh, Brendan and that. I'll bring you over. What he's uh, doing is he's showing the new sticker setup and a few bit mods and bits and pieces he's done on the uh, KDM 690. Man, that is a trippy looking bike. I reckon most people would really like. Personally, it's just too out there for me. You know me, I'm plain old black. Um, but yeah, majority of people would love that. It, it looks pretty sweet. Not something that I wouldn't ride, but yeah. Good on you, Craig. Now, what do we got going on in this video? We fixed Max's head stem nut. Matt's KLR650 drops around. Of course, we check out what Nay's up to in the wood shop. Ah, sleeping mats. And we even do some BB news and shit. Right, eh? Let's go wherever. Rightio guys, so this is a, a little lesson for those DIY backyard budget bike building people, aka me. This is why you take stuff to a mechanic and get it done properly. Unless you're like me and you learn and you learn by your mistakes. I'm quite happy with that. <laughs> but, so, the problem that I had with um, Max's head stem, the nut came on the ramble, it came to totally lost the whole bloody nut. And the reason for that is because when I put that triple clamp on, I tightened up that nut on the top after already having the um, forks and all that done up. I should have done the triple clamp bolt uh, nut, tightened that up, then you do the forks and tighten all that up. That's apparently seems to be the problem. We'll find out for sure. Um, hopefully it doesn't come off after this. So what I've done is I've pulled, pulled him all back again. So it was the, the nut that holds that onto there that go threads onto there. So while I'm here, I've just gave this a, I'm not touching it because I've just finally done the final clean on it. Um, those welds there, there, and at the back, which is I had to, for the, um, for the uh, stabiliser kit, which was actually for that, that to fit on there, I had to grind some of these welds off for it to, to fit on there. So, <clears throat> I'm now going to paint it. So I've scuffed it all up. There was bugger all, there was most probably just a slight amount of uh, surface rust on. I just gave it a quick uh, hit with the sandpaper. Put some wax and grease on it. So now I'm just gonna paint it. Right, yeah, so all I'm gonna use is just, you know, your touch up stuff that you get from super, yeah, from an auto shop, just to touch up stone chips on your bloody car or whatever. So I've got a bit, I've got plenty of this bloody stuff. So that's what I'm gonna paint on there. It'll just help protect that metal from rusting. I think that I will be dead and gone before, if I had left this, I'd be dead and gone by the time it actually would rust and actually be a problem. But we try and do the right things every now and then. Keep you guys happy. Righty eh, so this will be like what Nay does when she paints her uh, nails. Nice little covering on there. Right, hey, some on the back here. Rough as guts, nobody's gonna see this. So long as it just covers all that bare metal, that's all we're worried about. So a bit of a uh, hit with the old um, heat gun and I'll go and have a cuppa and I'll come back out and we'll uh, put it all back together. Oh, in actual fact, whoops, sorry guys, started just zooming in. I do have these two things. So I've got a washer and the nut. Brilliant. 
Now I was going to do some tidying up of bloody wires and bits and pieces, but um, I won't worry about that another time. Too much on me plate at the minute, guys. It's not a bad thing, um, but just me having so much on the go, so many different things uh, to do. I tell you what, it makes the time fly, absolute, absolute fly. Um, and it's good because I'm never bored. I'm always got bloody stuff to go, but it doesn't allow you time to really you know, do a really good job on shit. At the end of the day, jobs get done, things work. That's it. They work and I have fun. <laughs> right here, guys, so I've had me cuppa, the uh, paint seems to be dry. Dry enough anyway. Right, eh? So now all I've got to do is put all this back together. <laughs> Well, there we go, guys. That is Max all back together. And I tell you what, he certainly feels a whole lot better. Confident that I've put him back together correctly. Time will only tell. Now, what I've done is I've also put myself a... Oh, now I can get in on there. So hopefully you can see that paint that I've painted on that nut. So I'll be able to keep an eye on it just to start with, just to see if it starts to move or not. Give me a heads up. Well, there you go, guys. That is a job done. I'm absolutely bloody knackered. What time is it? Bloody hell. 1.25 in the morning. So I think I'm going to go inside, have a cup of tea, sit down and watch a bit of TV with Nay. Actually, Nay did her back this week. Um... And I'll tell you what, it's strange for Nay to actually get sick or have an ailment of any description. But her back went on her. And it was, she was doing, working on those Harley signs. She got up in the morning, she was in a dressing gown, and she just went into that shed and just started doing stuff. And it's all the fine, the fine bloody little fine paintbrush. Apparently, <laughs> six hours later, she come out of there. She was still in her bloody dressing gown. Um, and that's what ended up doing her back, so she's got to start watching herself as well. Uh, all my tools are put away, that's it. Max is back, that makes me really, really happy. Um, but like I said, we'll wait and see. So, what did I learn? I fixed up the gator too, so some of the guys that watched when I was doing the, the video about the mini air compressor, when I was doing the editing of the video, it was driving me nuts looking at it. Um, the gator on the on the fork was all twisted. It was just yeah, so I fixed that up too. Um, but what did I learn? I learned that when putting when you've got the the triple tree clamp, uh, when doing that up, you should not you must not have the forks done up. Have the triple clamp tightened up, then put your forks in or do the forks if they're si if they're sitting in there, then tighten them up. The forks are the last things that get tightened up, and then obviously, as we already know, when you put your tire on, you loose it and do the blah blah blah. But yeah, that's what I learned. The triple blah. Too late, guys. I'm gone. Back to the man cave. I don't know. Right here, guys. Matt has turned up on his KLR. 650, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 650. And what do we got, Matt? What's on the back of this thing? Uh, pretty bit of metal. Look at that. Done. So that's it. You've just ridden it straight from yep. getting it all registered? Uh, no, I rode home first. Well, oh, I well. rode to a work meeting and then rode home and then rode here, but yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that's brilliant. So that would... What'd you say it was? It was 190 bucks. $192, I think. Three months rego, the plate, and whatever fees they had. Yeah. Brilliant. Love so it. there you go. So that's worked out a bloody absolute bargain. It has, yeah. Yep. I don't know whether I told you, because it took it, got its uh, roadworthy. So the roadworthy, oh, and the new uh, tyre. Yeah, so. so it was 115 for the tyre, 150 for the roadworthy. 
It was like 50 um, bucks. 50 so bucks fitting the tyre. Fitting and a few other, there was a few washes and bits and pieces that they just chucked on there for yeah. the roadworthy. But everything else, it was sweet as. So, yeah. literal, absolute yeah. bargain of the century. Yeah. Yep. So, cheers, cheers. So, now all you got to, now all you got to do is go, well, okay, where do we start? Uh, front, front brakes. <laughs> front brakes. Yep. yep. Fixing up those front brakes because they're not the best. Have you ordered those parts? No. No, yeah. I was waiting until it was registered and I didn't have any hiccups. Yeah. So it was all. Yeah. It's just a one step at a time, don't get ahead of myself sort of thing. Yeah. So I'll order the brakes tonight and. Um, that can be done. Yeah, that can be done and then. That can be removed. That can get knocked off because it's useless. Totally useless. Yeah. I, I agree. Cannot at all lift that bike up onto it. No. Be interesting. I wonder if anybody else is doing that to run it. Yeah, so. That um, center stand, Matt's tried, I've tried. I mean, I haven't gave it a. Oh, let's, oh, hang on, oh, hang on. Well, no, you want to hold that? Cool let's just get it up on there, right? Yeah. Maybe try it on the concrete as well instead of. Sure, it's got nothing to grab. Oh, there you go. Yeah, well, no. we've got it up. No, that's not okay, though, because I almost broke my ankle on the side stand. Oh, shit. Oh, you're right. Yeah, no, I'm all right. But I well, just felt it push on it. It works, but... Because um, I can't get to the center stand with the side stand there. Now that you've done it. Yeah, but now you've got to try and do the awkward. Yeah. Oh, oh, you're so close. Oh, it's almost, is it? Yeah, yeah. Right, with a bit of a help. Yes. Yeah. That's useless. That's, yeah. Once that gets loaded up with... Yeah. You know, there's no way I'm lifting that on that stand. No. So I'm sure happen. for checking... Oh, I don't know. Guys out there will be... Gas. Some of you guys have any... Oh, no, no, no. It's really handy, but... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unless somebody can give me some sort of... Excellent tip on how to do it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, once that gets loaded up with more gear and all that stuff. Oh! Filled the tank. Yes. Because I hit reserve riding oh. the Vic Roads. Oh, did you? Yeah, it started stalling out on the road going like just out the front of Vic Roads. I'm like, oh no. Oh, and I'm, oh no, flick it to reserve. Yep, bang away it goes. So I filled it up, I got in 19 litres. And I wasn't completely bone dry. So no, it's still been a couple reserve. of litres reserve. So nine, was it supposed to be 2020? 23, so. I reckon that'd be pretty bang yeah, on. Pretty bloody good. That's yeah. a decent sized tank for a, for stock, a stock pocket. Yeah. 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 So there you go. Cool bananas. Right, eh? Back to the man cave and we'll see, you'll see as he does bits and pieces to it. Yeah. Cool. Right, yeah, guys, it's time to check out what Nay's up to in the wood shop, but she's around here at the minute. We are going to go into the wood shop. You're going to play my game? It's a bit bright, is it? It is a bit bright. What's your game? Well, can we show them the um, HD, Harley Davidson signs? I'm very excited. Obviously, they're not complete, but yes, you may show them. Excellent. Righty, eh? Look at these. These, I reckon these are so bloody fantastic. They've come up. Because obviously, when they, when, you know, they starts to do it, she starts with something and then she's added and then it's like it's not feeling it and there's a whole process to it sometimes you know if you can see a design and you can bloody replicate it and keep it bloody you know whatever but then sometimes you'll get customers and she got a um a ford sign hopefully nobody's listening to this I, it's hard to know whether these are presents and people don't know or whatever but there's a ford sign and all the different models that someone's got and having the Ford logo and then these it's to make it work on one of these signs is really bloody difficult and Nay struggles with it then I have a go at bloody struggles and then today Matt came was around and he showed us a sign which was not Ford it was Falcon but Nay was able to turn that style of sign anyway Sometimes it takes ages, but 
it's really good when you get on a good design and then you feel happy doing it. Um, so that's what Nay, that's what Nay is uh, printing out at the moment, the Ford one. We'll go out into the shed um, when Nay's finished doing what she's doing. What are you doing, Papa? Hey. She's smothering me. <laughs> oh, look. It's Larry. Larry the Chook. So that there, that's a Nay tip. <laughs> that's um, a mason jar, like a just glass jar, and it's got paint in it. And they put the glove over it to seal it. And of course, then I came along and I went, oh my god, I can see something of that. And I just drew some eyes on it. <laughs> We're a little crazy, aren't we? I'm perfectly sane. Right, are we going out in the shed? Oh. Righty, hey guys, so. In the shed, so as you can see down there, Nay is doing more triumph, little triumphs, the flat track because she's getting orders for lots of different things. You're also doing one of those uh, custom notepad doobalackies. Yep. So, there became a problem. Hang on. <laughs> so the problem is there's not enough bloody pallets or Nay's special pallets in Bendigo to be able to make all these bloody signs. So it was like scratching our head, searching wood yards and stuff like that. Eventually we found, is that one of those pieces? Is that one of the new ones, that one? That is. That's your practice piece. Yeah, so that's what it looks like. So we found at Bunnings that they have, what size is it, Nay? Uh, 92, 92 by 11. So 92 millimetres yep. by 11 millimetres. Mm -hmm. It comes in a 5.4 meter length, um, so it's brand new pine. It has a coat. They put a paint coating on it. Um, so then the next, so we thought, brilliant, excellent, because it was really hard to find something very similar to that to that wood. Anyway, she found it. The next thing was how are we going to make it look a little bit, you know, old? But if basically figured out how to do it, and that is just by doing the edges. We thought we might have to to kind of like scuff up, but it doesn't, it, they look the same. So there's a whole heap here yeah. that she's done that you've covered up. <laughs> Whoop. I don't know what I'm doing guys, but yeah, so there's a whole heap, big ones, small ones, and they just look like the pallet stuff. Brilliant. So then you go going, but shit, the cost, because that's what we did, yeah. We're getting the wood for free. Your basic cost prices on that. Yeah, it's a it's a trick because you get the free pallet wood, but you use a crap ton of sandpaper and all of that to get it to look. Let alone the petrol, the time. So basically, what we did was jumped in the jeep with the trailer, drove into Bunnings, grabbed five lots of 5.4 metres, chucked it on top of the bloody uh, Jeep, paid for it, drove home. And then we just grabbed, set up the... You getting dizzy yet? We set this up so that, you know, you butted in and the bloody wood was 5.4 metres out there. And then we just went zoom, zoom, zoom. Big ones, little ones. And then she just goes and then does sanding and there's a lot, still a lot of work in it. But I reckon, even there's, though you're paying, sorry. No. There's less work now, Yep. but more work all at the same time. It's really hard to explain. Yeah, I think you should be coming out. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cost me a little bit more. Yeah. But it'll save me time. Yeah. And she's still keeping the price the same. Oh yeah, yeah prices cool. don't change. That's not their fault. That's mine. That's Choice. it. Jeez, I'm all over the joint. <laughs> so, so correct me if I'm wrong, because uh, I know if you want to if you want a custom sign or something like that, don't contact me. You can if you want, because people send me an email, and all I do is reply to them, going, "Yep, no worries. I'll forward it to Nay." Go to Nay's website. Here's the website thing. I'll put a link in the description. Just contact Nay directly. And she'll bloody tell you whatever. But all the big signs like that, uh, $90, and that's shipped anywhere in Australia. Australia. If you want it international, that's going to cost roughly 
For the US, that costs sixty-five dollars just in postage. Six there, so ninety dollars yeah. plus sixty-five dollars shipping. Yeah. And that one's twenty-five. Is that right? Twenty-five shipping. Thirty-five, 35, 35 shipping. Thirty-five. Yeah. And but if you get say two big signs, ah. it's only an extra ten dollars. Because you had someone do that. Yeah, I've had. Yeah. Yeah. So it. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing I can do about that. It actually cost me a, just a little bit more than the 65. Yeah. You know, 67 something, 68. Yeah. So I've set it at the 65 and then, yeah. Cool. So 60, So for the international guys wanting to know, that's going to be your, your rough guide is $65 just to ship it, $35 for a little one. Yeah. On top of the price. So $90 for a big sign. Sixty dollars for the small, cool. And if you want to get one done, so that can we see? <laughs> They'll have to wait a while. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna make up. I've just cleared. I've just cleared a spot on here. I'm gonna set up a board on here, much like what my uh, shit to get done thing that I have, and I'm gonna write everybody's. The names and the signs that are being done so that it'll help me it may help you if it's all about me um, it'll help me for the video showing the, what's coming up and what's going on I don't know can you see that's the Ford oh can you see the Ford you might be able to, you'll see it next week anyway this is really cool they're all really cool and that one you didn't tell them what the other one was what was the other one that one there. Oh, have you got, is that the Mack truck? No, no, that's not Mack truck. She's no. doing a Mack truck? <laughs> I'm not doing a Mack truck, I'm doing a Mack truck sign. Mack yeah. truck sign. And, oh, so this is, this is the Mazda RX-7, which is on the um, Japanese rising sun flag. You might, so you'll see that one next week as well. Yeah, I don't they, think they can see anything other no. than black. <laughs> yeah, okay. Cool. So there's some very interesting um, signs going to be coming out. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Cool bananas. I hope right. they all work. <laughs> She's playing my game really well, eh? Hey? Yeah, no, go away. All right, see ya. I'm very tired. Sorry, guys, I've just bloody forgot. Now he's already starting to peel off the, uh, the Rising Sun Mazda RX-7. Shut up, Mark. All right. Um... So here's a photo uh, that Stephen, uh, the Rising Sun Suzuki next to the, as you can see, next to the, um, the Triumph one. And also Wayne who did the, the hairdresser one for Becky's uh, missus uh, for her hair salon. So this is her opening up the present, getting it and hanging it up. Bloody ripper. <laughs> that looks great. Right, guys, I wanna, I've just been doing the editing of the uh, Nays Wood Shop. Um, Another thought with the, the whole, you know, with buying the wood for Monet to make those signs, another bonus is that we won't get all the byproducts. So with the pallets, when we rip them apart, there's a lot of lot of wood that's left over that's not used. So I, I chop it all up and then we use that for burning in the, in the, uh, in the man cave, um, which is good, but it also, you get pretty excess amounts of it. Um, especially with her doing the amount that she's doing now. The other thing that I wanted to touch on, because I was watching and I'm going, I'm, I'm saying all these bloody plot prices, and they're Australian dollars. Now, I don't know whether all Americans um, understand, and I don't mean to be um, sounding rude in that sense, um, understand how, if you're in America, Chances are that you've never had to buy something from another country because you've got everything over there. It's it's uh, us Australians, you know, we want um, floorboards for our Boulevard C50. Uh, likely chances are we're going to have to get it from America because we don't have them here. They're not stocking them here. We have to buy them in America or, you know, whatever it is, a lot of the times we can't buy it here. Um, and we have to get it from America. So what happens there? So we, we know how that how that works because we're dealing with that all the time. We try and avoid buying stuff from the UK because the UK um, dollar is even stronger than the US dollar. Um, so that means it costs us even more again. Um, and the other and why I'm saying this, we watched me and they watched a documentary, the ZZ Top documentary. And it was really interesting because 
Now this is obviously going back in the day. I don't know whether it's it's still the same now, but there was a mention there about because they're Texans. So you see these tops from Texas, and when they were doing their stuff and they were going out into other states, people didn't know who these people were and where what they're from Texas. What's Texas? And that was really like I went what? And they meant they said that um, I might have this wrong. But Americans learn their state history before their country history. Here in Australia, we have a very, compared to other countries, we have a very short history. Um, whereas America and UK and, and all those other ones, your history is just so long, there's so much that you can learn. So in Australia, we're taught our history, but we're also taught all the other countries. So we're, I think we're, we're very well versed in outside of Australia we get taught a lot of that stuff whereas Americans I think are just taught what's in America not the outside I might have that wrong I don't know but I thought I'd just touch on this um, I'm bloody rambling I feel like I'm rambling so what you can do if you don't know how this bloody stuff works I've got this thick screen running so you can go to Google, you type in currency converter, and this little page comes up. So you can see here that one Australian dollar is actually, a, in a, for us, for us to buy an Australian dollar, it would cost us $1.54 Australian dollars. Um, if you, in the UK, if I flick this over to the other one, it's the UK is pound sterling. So their one pound sterling would cost us Australians $1.90 to buy. So, to put that in reality, if I was to buy something in the UK for $10, I would have to take out of my Australian wallet and pay $19 for, send that over. I've got to send $19 for Australian, and the person in the UK will receive $10 pounds. So, in America, if we flick over, same deal if I put ten dollars in there. I have to take out of my Australian wallet fifteen dollars forty one, send it to to that bloke over in the US or that company, and he'll end up with ten dollars US. Um so if I was to put um so if you were to buy so for the guys in the US if Nay's saying a sign is $90, you're actually only gonna pay $58.42. Now, the dollars are changing every day, so obviously you've gotta check. This is a, a, an average or a rough estimate at the moment. So it's only gonna cost you $58.42, and if the shipping was, uh, what did she say, it was $65, so that's $155, so total $155. For the sign and the shipping, it's actually only kind of cost you one hundred dollars, hundred one hundred dollars and sixty one cents. Crazy, and I suppose if you're in the UK, if we did the same thing, one hundred and fifty five dollars is only eighty one pounds. So there you go. That's my little lesson. I hope I got that kind of like right, right, and I don't. Hopefully, I didn't offend any of the Americans. Um, saying that you don't really know outside of your own country. <laughs> I don't mean it that way. I, I understand why that would may be the case, if you know what I mean. Right, eh? Cool bananas. Rightio, guys. So a bit of R&D has been going on here in the lounge room. I went and bought a one of these sleeping mats. It's a, a climate. It's K-L-Y-M-T. Here it is here. Climate. It's an, this is an insulated one. You can get it in the tan or the orange. Now this is my Cedar Summit. And you go, well Mark, why, why did you buy this when you've already got one of these? And it's, you say it's fantastic. And it is fantastic, but it squeaks. So when you move, roll around on it, um, it has that squeaky noise. If anybody's um, owned one of these, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, on the ramble when there's a few people on them, you can hear it, you're in your tent, you can hear them moving around because it's ee, 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 ee. 
Um, apparently this climate one doesn't do that. Now I've already been out in the real world and tested this out. I'm not going to go any further into that because I may incriminate myself. Um, so the reason why I bought that was basically because of the, the squeaky noise. Last night I've actually slept on this because when I did the real world testing, I think I had this pumped up too much. And I was, I now what I'm doing is, well I'm thinking everything works really really good. I'm, I'm going to do a review video on this so I'll go into more detail about it. But the comfortability of this one as opposed to this one, I'm, th I'm thinking that this one's not as comfortable. But I think it was because I had it too pumped up. So I slept on this last night with it, uh, with the less air in it, which is a bit like the air hawk. I'm rambling here guys. But now tonight, I have to now sleep on this to then go, well, it, it, do you know what I mean? Oh, God, it's like a pain in the ass, but anyway. That's what, I, that's what I'm bloody doing. So hopefully this week, well, definitely this week, I'll have a video doing a bit of a review on this and a kind of a comparison to this. Um, there's not much in it, and even the price now, I, I think because there's so many of these styles, coming out because Cedar Summit I think was the first ones that came out with this um, and now that there's so many other ones similar to this they're now dropping their price and the price differences are pretty comparable now but anyway I'll go through all that in that video anyway I just thought I'd share that little bit with you right yeah guys so I've got a little bit of uh, BB news and shit just quickly um, Someone asked a question, made me go to the Honda, the Australian Honda motorcycle website. I've got this bloody screen thing going again. I think I'm getting pretty switched on with using that thing. Um, so this is Australia's, yeah, Honda Australia's official website. Now, as you can see there, the CT125. What the devil is that bike there doing on this website? What's it doing there? Does that mean that Australia, look, they've got a red one, they've got one of those, it's on, you can see up the top here, look, it's .com.au, that's Australia. Um, request a test ride, blah, blah, blah. So, they've got all the information on there about it. The specs, they've got all that there. The only thing they don't have is the price. Normally what happens is in this spot here, um, a, you put in your postcode and then hit it and then it gives you what the right away price is because in each state of Australia there's different taxes and laws and whatever. Um, so there you go. That's. Does that mean that... I should ring, hang on, oh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ring Elliot Brothers, see if I can speak to uh, Clinton, and uh, see if he knows anything. So, well, I'll do that right now, hang on. Uh, this is also Google, 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 Yeah, g'day Noel, it's Mark from Biker Bits. How are you, mate? Good, Mark. That's Good. a shot. Is Clinton about? Yeah, he's just on a phone call, mate. Alright, you might you might know the answer to this. The uh, the Honda CT125 that Japan's brought out, I see it's on the Australian Honda website, but there's no price. Is it coming to Australia? Jesus, I haven't heard anything about it, but that's a... Yeah, I just I went I went to the Honda website just for something else, and then I noticed that they had that little Honda, that new, you know, you know the bike I'm talking about. Well, I, I, if it's a CT, no, I don't. I know an XR than that. But well, what they've done, it, it looks they've all they've done is they've updated the the CT one ten, yeah, you know, the posty bike that we know, and it's got disc oh, brakes yeah. and ABS, and they've just jazzed oh, it up, yeah. but it still looks exactly the same. Oh, yes, I do. I have seen or heard something about that. Yeah. yeah, so does anybody else there you think might know? Um, I'll see. I'll see if he's on. That's alright, I'll just ring back in a minute. Sorry, matey, I'm sorry. No, that's alright, Noel. Alright, I appreciate that. Good on you. Okay, see ya. Thank you, bye-bye. Right, so what I'll do now, guys, is... I'm going to put up here that I've 
spoke to Clinton and now it's telling you what the hell he told me. So there you go. Uh, now, in other news, there is an absolute brilliant motorcycle. Let's come over to the screen and check this bike out. Nay actually, um, Nay actually showed me this. She's seen it on Instagram. Look at that. Would you look at that? So basically, this guy has built a motorcycle using a uh, Volkswagen that the front fender. It's just cool as shit. So what I'm going to do, guys, just so I don't go through all this, um, is I'll send you in the description. There will be a link to this um, article. Look at that. Just this is the trippy bit. That just looks so trippy. Following this thing along, crazy. There it is. That's the raw, the raw bits. Volkspod. Are people amazing? Love it. <laughs> right, eh? Back to the man cave. Right, hang on, guys. Before we bloody go, I did get on to uh, Clinton from Elliott Brothers. That's the Honda, Kawasaki, and chainsaws and all that kind of stuff dealer here in Bendigo. Um, Clinton hadn't heard much, and of course, of the uh, the thing that we don't mention here on Man Cave Tuesday. Reps and all that kind of stuff is, you know, communication hasn't been all that, uh, you know, forthcoming and all that kind of bullshit. So what he did was he jumped on his ordering system. He, the uh, the two, the red and the, and the matte al fresco, whatever color, they both showed up there. He went to, he clicked to order one and it said, sorry, you cannot order it. And he couldn't see any pricing for it. So basically Clinton said it's one of those things where it's just, Watch this space to see what happens. Who knows? <laughs> cool. Well, there you go, guys. That is Man Cave Tuesday done and dusted for another week. Hope you all enjoyed it. Um, so I'll have uh, two videos. So the, the sleeping mat, bloody comparison, bullshit thing. And I'm also still got, I was supposed to do that last week. Uh, the dual sport adventure riding gear, the stuff that I use and I most probably put some of my personal thoughts on maybe for um, people getting into it what you should be you what you should use uh, people sometimes go to the extremes and I think I'd like I'd give some of my thoughts on you know the whole you don't have to expend a spend a fortune to start getting into it or depending on how you're riding where you're riding and all those kinds of bits and pieces I'll try and get that done this week I should I will bloody hell whatever right eh? Keep on riding guys, and if you ain't riding, keep on keeping on.